Okay, guys. It is okay. It is time I talk about this roller coaster. I, 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 I need to talk about it. Oh my gosh. Let's let. Here we go. Let's let's do this. Okay, greetings, roller coaster fanatics. Welcome back to Fanatic Reviews. We're gonna be here talking about Lightning Rod. One of the granddaddy wooden roller coasters that has just taken the coaster enthusiast world by storm. Let's talk about it. So, yeah, let's start off by saying 2016 was a very bad year for Lightning Rod. It barely was open for like about two months over the course of the 12-month uh, year or the 10-month season. So, that's not off to a good start. But it did open officially on June 13th, 2016. Now this coaster is a lot like Top Thrill Dragster in the way that Top Thrill Dragster suffered on its first year and did not open, uh, it was not open consistently throughout the year. And the second year, it definitely was open more often, but it still suffered a lot through that second year. And by the third season, Dragster was able to function uh, mostly throughout the year. And I think that's what Lightning Rod's going through. The second year, it's uh, going to be open a lot more than um, 2016, but I think by 2018, light they would have gotten down consistently where the operation would have definitely cleaned up on Lightning Rod and all the problems would have majorly been fixed. So, but right now, I mean, I believe Lightning Rod is down as, as of when this video is coming out, uh, but hopefully they'll be able to uh, open it really soon. So let's actually start it off. So Lightning Rod is themed to what? Well, it's themed to the Lightning Rod itself. The Lightning Rod Hot Rod Cars. And uh, so when you walk in, there's a lot of theming in the station. The sta station is basically this shop. It's basically the shop that uh, has parts um, for the uh, Lightning Rod. So there's a lot. There's a model of a Hot Rod. There's also like tires in front. They'll be playing a lot of uh, cool 60s music. There's Beach Boys. Um, throughout the queue, um, and then of course it's kind of it's kind of built up like a garage almost. Um, the way the station is structured, uh, there's cool signs like uh, "Gone Rotten" or something like that. Um, and then throughout the queue line, there'll be like little parts throughout uh, through here and there, and there, uh, there's like writing on a chalkboard, and it's actually really interesting. The theming is really nice at, uh, for uh, being one of the coasts at Dollywood. Dollywood is known for having theming, but not this heavily amount of theming. I, I think it's pretty nice for what they did to the, I mean, the train is basically a large uh, hot rod. They had a cool uh, back part to the car, but that was weighing the car down, so they did have to take that out. However, they still have the front part there, which is really cool. These are your standard normal RMC trains, so they have the standard uh, lap bar that uh, goes down. I will say, it, it unlike the other ones, I believe, um, unlike Outlaw Run, this one didn't like uh, push down anymore. I, I, I find it interesting that it kind of stayed put. So, I mean, I guess that says a lot about this ride. So we know that this ride has a 200 uh, plus lift tail when it comes when it goes uh, to inclining up. So it goes about uh, definitely more than 200 feet. Um, and of course, what's really cool is uh, it's the second drop. So the first drop it just kind of dips and then goes over into the big drop, which is 165 feet at a 73 degree angle. So when it comes to other RMCs, it's not as steep as the other RMCs, but still it does feel really steep and it's really cool. Of course, afterwards, and it's not as steep as Outlaw run per se um, and the drop is I would prefer outlaw runs over this but the drop is still really nice on this you're definitely feeling the speed and of course the maximum speed of the fastest water coaster in the world as of now by one mile per hour and that's 73 miles per hour and that is after the first drop thanks to the fact that you already had a nice speed uh, pertaining after the launch when you go into the first drop it's able to go at 73 miles per hour this coaster goes a total length of 3,600 feet of track with a total time duration of 3 minutes and 12 seconds which is uh, from the time you leave the station uh, to the time you enter back into the station so there is a couple of time when you're uh, sitting on the break room which is really nice if you have not been to Dollywood this year uh, but you went last year you notice there's only one train operations on this coaster there are now two trains which is really nice so they're able to have a lot more capacity going uh, on this ride so which is really nice so we're done with statistics, now let's get into the grid of this roller coaster. And wow, this is a masterpiece. Alan Shilke, you did a great job with this roller coaster. Beautiful, and the manufacturing is just well done on this roller coaster. I just have to praise it. It's so 
good. Like, holy cow. This thing was engineered to perfection. And just every design on this thing was incredible. You start off by doing a right, uh, right hand turn. Then you uh, start feeling the launch down the bottom, which takes you into the launches that are on the lift hill. And what is crazy is it feels like you are going to just fall off the track because you are just speeding insane. Like, it feels like you're going faster than about 40 miles an hour, which I believe is how fast the launch takes you. It is crazy. You start off launching, but as you keep going, you feel like you're just getting pulled back. And it is incredible. And then starting off, this thing is just airtime after airtime. The airtime is nuts. Classic RMC, Jector airtime all over the place. It is incredible. Of course, you dip down, then you drop uh, into right over. Um... And then you just uh, just go right into like a little ditch. You come up for a big wave turn. I will say, like uh, with the drop, I do prefer the wave turn on Outlaw Run compared to this. Uh, but this definitely has a nice feel when you crest up, and then you just get a lot of uh, airtime sideways. Then you crest back down, and then you turn to the right. Then you flip left and do a, an airtime moment on a hill. Then you uh, turn back to the right. And then you and then you come up again to the left, and then go into another airtime hill. Then it turns back right, comes up for an airtime hill, turns right again, <laughs> and then goes into the quad down. And the first hill in the quad down is what got me because you get incredible airtime on this thing. It is nuts. And the quad down in general is beautiful. It is insane. I'm surprised we haven't seen anything like this before. It is incredible. And who knows, maybe other coasters will do. But that is awesome. And then after the quad down, you enter a small little bunny hop hill, which is just amazing. Then you come in for a big overbank turn, but not going upside down. Then you uh, crest, uh, drop down into the brakes. It is amazing how much airtime experience you can experience on this roller coaster. What's even more awesome is what I said earlier, how the lap bar kind of stays put. What is amazing is you can kind of have it down just a little bit. I was able to leave some room so that the airtime was nuts. I was out of my seat a whole lot on this ride, especially right before the, like, right on the first hill of the quad down. It is nuts. And it, this thing is relentless. If you're not a big fan of very intense, relentless roller coasters like Intimidator 305 or Maverick, this coaster might not be for you. I will warn you for that. This thing is all about the intensity and relentlessness. You, there's not a single time on this roller coaster where you can breathe and just go, okay, I can take my breath, I'm ready for some more. So this is just straight out intense, and that is awesome. I mean, like I said earlier, this thing is just a beautiful masterpiece, and by golly, this was an incredible roller coaster, and I definitely recommend riding this. I did not get a chance to ride this at night, but I bet you it is incredible. The first time I rode it, I was just like, wow, what an awesome coaster. Each successive ride is better than the next, and it leads out to each time you're riding, you're just like, oh my gosh, and it's just like, you want more. It is that incredible. I did get the right back row on this. To be honest, I heard a lot of people say it really is not good in the back. I found it to be enjoyable. I did not find it to be that rough, really. I found it to be just as smooth. There was maybe like one part after the drop or after the wave turn where there there is some little bit of roughness. But um, oh, other than that, I mean, it's not bad. I do feel a bit cramped in these cars, but... I mean, I, I, they're overall not like they're not the worst of cars. I've been definitely been in worse. And overall, this coaster is just fantastic. This is definitely a front row rider, and it is amazing. Just overall, this is just a masterpiece. That even though it's had a lot of technical problems, this is still one of the greatest wooden coasters that has been built to this date. And I will leave it right then and there. I'm gonna give a lightning rod at Dollywood. An A plus. It it definitely does deserve that, despite having problems with operations. I mean, that's going to happen with most coasters. A lot of coasters. I mean, Dragster went through that. Um, and Tim Mary 305 one year had a really bad year. So I mean, great coasters will often will always have problems. I mean, like I said in my Fury 325 video where um, I gave that an A+. Plus. I talked about how every coaster that has an A+, plus, um, for me anyway, will have flaws no matter what. There's not 
a single perfect coaster, 100% perfect coaster out there, but there are coasters that are close enough to be perfect. So, and this is definitely one of them. It is up there with Millennium Force, Fury, uh, Intimidator 305, all the great, awesome coasters out there. I mean, it is amazing. So, it definitely deserves that grade. And that will do it for this review. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to check out other Fanatic reviews. I have a full playlist of them. I'm definitely uh, coming back to do more videos like this. Um, if you want, if you know of a coaster that I've been on that you'd like to see on re uh, me review, uh, definitely post it in the comments below. And don't forget, if you like this video, like uh, hit that like button and subscribe for more video content like this. That's all, folks. And as always, roller coaster fanatics, keep coasting.